They can be a great people, Caratel, if they wish to be. For this reason, above all others, their capacity for good. I am sending them you, my one and only bun. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. I know I'm a bit late for Easter. Regardless, today I'm taking a look at the DC Multiverse McFarlane Collector Edition, Captain Carrot. Starting off with the packaging, and Captain Carrot comes in one of those extra wide, extra shiny Collector Edition window boxes. I love how he's posed just kind of pointing at himself. Like, yeah. You're seeing this right. Name and logo down here. On the side, we can see Captain Carrot as number eight in the McFarlane Collector Edition series. And for the uninitiated, this version of Captain Carrot comes from a comic called Justice League Incarnate. Pretty much imagine a version of the Justice League made up of characters from across the multiverse. On the back, we get a picture of Captain Carrot. Pretty much they took the cover of Justice League Incarnate, zeroed in on Captain Carrot's small corner, and blew it up. As a result, it does look a bit fuzzy. What do you expect, Doc? I'm a rabbit. It's not the end of the world, but I do feel like I wouldn't be doing my due diligence if I didn't at least point it out. In fact, for packaging, I'm giving Captain Carrot five points. Moving on to presentation, into the top of his head, Captain Carrot comes to seven inches, but to the top of his ears, he comes to eight and a half. Making his debut in a side story in the back of a Teen Titans comic, Captain Carrot is basically the Superman of Earth-26. Earth-26 is a world inhabited by anthropomorphic cartoon animals. Instead, Instead of a mild-mannered reporter, Captain Carrot is a cartoonist, and his name is Roger Rabbit. Plagiarism! So yeah, this is probably worth discussing. The beloved film Who Framed Roger Rabbit came out in 1988, but it was based on a book called Who Censored Roger Rabbit, which came out in 1981. Captain Carrot made his debut one year later in 1982. For my money, I personally suspect that this is just a case of parallel thought. To me, the more questionable origins come from Bugs Bunny. Roger Rodney Rabbit, or just Rodney Rabbit as he's been more recently referred to gets his powers from eating magical cosmic carrots. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much exactly what happened in the Superman episode of Bugs Bunny. How many counts of plagiarism? One one thousand! Two one thousand! With all that out of the way, though, let's talk about the figure. The level of detail the McFarlane toys put into this head sculpt is staggering. You see all that sculpted fur detail? The extra paint to bring all that detail out? And just the general attitude and personality. He's got his carrot buttons holding up his cape, and flipping that cape around we see some incredible leather detail. I Wait a minute. Leather detail? Leather on a world of nothing but anthropomorphic animals? So were they like skinning their friends or... You know what? I don't want to think about it. There's more carrots on his gloves and the inside the gloves have some yellow grippies. I do appreciate the extra painted detail, but I was a bit disappointed by the calves. At a distance, it all looks like one big red boot. Zooming in though, there should be more of that yellow bodysuit, but they just kept the whole lower leg red. And it's kind of baffling too because they did go in and put the extra paint on the tail, which admittedly you're less likely to see. That said, though, we've got to talk about these feet. They're sufficiently big and rabbit-like, but most importantly, they have those comical cartoon toes. I guess they're kind of like the superhero equivalent to Vibrams. There's also one small addition that McFarlane made that I'm really getting a kick out of. The texture on the bodysuit. Looking at the artwork, and that's definitely something that Captain Carrot does not have in the comic. And in general, this is the kind of McFarlaneization I don't really like, but I want to make an exception here. Why? Because that way he can blend in with your movie figures. He's ridiculous in all the best ways, but dinging him ever so slightly for the unpainted calves and for presentation I'm giving Captain Carrot four points. Moving on to posability and Captain Carrot's what we've come to expect, but with a couple of surprises. Very tall surprises. Much to my delight, the ears are actually ball jointed, so you can move those all around. Definitely gives him some different moods. Otherwise, we have the tried and true dumbbell joint in the neck. Unfortunately, he can't really look up, but down is no problem. He's got a great amount of tilt, and of course, all the way around. Moving on down, he can raise his arms this high, and of course, that wibbly wobbly rotator cuff gives him some extra range all around. Roger has bicep swivel, along with double jointed elbows with a pretty nice bend considering how bulky the arms are. And at the end of those arms are three figured hands that can swivel, and then hinge either up and down or side to side. Shifting to the torso, and Captain Carrot has a diaphragm 
diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. I do have to say that this diaphragm joint is pretty nicely integrated into the sculpt. And you can arch back this far, which is pretty decent. And you can hunch forward this far, which for a DC Multiverse character is pretty good. And I can't help but wonder if they hadn't just shaved a little bit of this diaper off if he couldn't have gotten a little bit better still. Either way, though, he has a more than serviceable amount of tilt. And, of course, twist. Below that belt and Captain Carrot has the typical McFarlane hips. Thanks to that pliant diaper, he can kick fairly high and just about 90 degrees and do a near-perfect split. Although it'll never make up for the range of a thigh cut, he does have some twist in the hip that's pretty good. He's also got double-jointed knees. Again, really brings attention to that lack of yellow. And then moving all the way down, those comical cartoon toes are articulated. And he has ankles that can swivel, hinge, and like Roger Rabbit transforming into Captain Carrot... Pivot. Man, that's crunchy. Crunchy like a carrot. Despite the cartoony larger-than-life proportions, there's no problem with articulation, and the posable ears were a fun, unexpected bonus. For posability, I'm giving Captain Carrot five points. Moving on to playability, and Captain Carrot comes with a decent amount of accessories. First things first, and of course we have a trading card on one of those fancy trading card stands. Interestingly enough, the card has a bit more of Captain Carrot than the back of the box does. If you want to learn more, more about Captain Carrot, his team, the Zoo Crew, or Justice League Incarnate, you can pause here. Interestingly enough, but not surprisingly, they're really pivoting into calling him Rodney Rabbit. Otherwise, instead of a normal figure stand, they gave him a flight stand. He's also got not one, but two pairs of additional hands. So, in addition to the pointing and accessory holding hands that he comes preloaded with, he also comes with a nicely painted fist, a thumbs up, and a pair of open slash flight hands. For a character like this, whose hands are not going to match anybody else in your collection, having these options is really nice, but I can't help but feel that something is missing. Something that would have gone in this accessory holding hand. Something central to this character and his power set. Why doesn't he come with a carrot? I'm not saying that these gesture hands aren't cool, and I do like them, but it's not like other action figures are going to come with carrots I can borrow. As of this recording, it's still a few days to Easter, so I'm going to look around and see if I can find something in a craft store or on a decoration aisle. But the fact that they didn't include one, to me anyway, is a big thumbs down. Jason from the future here, and yeah, I imagine to find these on sale at Hobby Lobby. They're too big for the accessory holding hand, but for now, this works for me. But playability is more than just accessories, it's also about how well your figure plays with others. Since he's the Superman of his world, for a few Superman comparisons, here we have Action Comics 1000, Hush, which is a much better match, and The Return of Superman, which might just be the best match of all. In the opposite direction, and here we have DC Classic with the Doomsday Superman trunks, but for that live action feel, and here we have Henry Cavill. For obvious reasons, and here we have Lex Luthor. Shh, be very, very quiet. For the only other member of Justice League Incarnate, and here's Thomas Wayne, otherwise known as Flashpoint Batman. For another rabbit-related action figure, and here's White Rabbit. But for a really gargantuan rabbit, and here we have the Were Rabbit from Wallace and Gromit, also by McFarlane Toys. Here we have an Easter chick and some carrots. For a relative scale comparison, here's Captain Carrot with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. As much fun as this figure is, until we get some more Justice League Incarnate or even Zoo Crew figures, your options are limited. And then of course, there's the Carrot situation. I love him, but for playability, I am giving Captain Carrot four points. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. As a McFarlane Collector Edition, Captain Carrot retails for $30, but finding him at retail is a challenge. If you're hunting this wascally wabbit on the aftermarket, that's going to set you back about 40 bucks, which isn't that much more than retail. But it does beg the question why it had to be a $30 collector figure at all. Even so, and factoring in availability for price, I'm giving Captain Carrot 4 points, averaging to a grand total of 4.4 out of 5. That's all, folks. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.